Okay, um, I'm Lee Rhodes um, and uh, the founder and, and chair of the uh, Apache Data Sketches, which is a production quality Java, C++, Python sketching library for the analysis of big data. <clears throat> um, so I'm gonna go, be going through this talk today. <clears throat> um, this is, gives you an uh, insight into our team. Um, we have um, uh, David uh, Cromberger and um, he's in London and a member of Permutive Incorporated and um, Charlie Dickens, who's a, a scientist uh, at Yahoo. John Malkin also um, is a, a scientist and principal research engineer at uh, Yahoo, myself and Alex <clears throat> are at Yahoo. And uh, this project started as an internal project uh, in Yahoo in 2012, and we went open source in 2015. Um, so <clears throat> it's been very successful inside Yahoo and a number of other companies have also uh, joined. We have a number of science advisors, uh, Graham Cormode, who's one of the um, uh, uh, top uh, scientists in the area of streaming algorithms, uh, Eshkar Hillel in, um, in Israel, uh, Ido Liberty, who's uh, CEO and chief scientist um, at Pinecone Technologies, Jelani Nelson, who's professor at uh, Berkeley, Justin Thaler, professor at Georgetown University, <clears throat> and Daniel Ting, who's a research scientist at Tableau and Salesforce, and Pavel Veasley, who's a professor at Charles University in Prague. Uh, and um, so anyway, this gives you an uh, insight into who we are uh, as a people. And we have really focused on bridging uh, the science of sketching algorithms to practical application. And that is really what um, uh, this, this project is all about. <clears throat> sketching algorithms, um, address common but computationally difficult problems uh, with big data. And the advantages of, of using sketching um, is um, it is orders of magnitude reduction in processing, processing time because these are streaming. It touches the data only once, and um, which means you really don't need uh, a lot of storage and there's no reprocessing of the data. And uh, so your orders that you have orders of magnitude reduction in not only processing time, but also memory requirements. And uh, sketching provides the only known solution for providing near real time analysis of these difficult problems uh, with massive data. And um, I'll, I'll uh, go through what some of these, uh, some of the problems are that we've uh, developed these solutions for. <clears throat> So a sketch itself is a streaming algorithm that solves a specific problem. Um, it's like sampling, but not always the same as sampling. Um, there, there is sort of a, um, a Venn diagram where some uh, sketches are a form of sampling and other sketches are, are not. Uh, they use other kinds of algorithms to uh, approximate the solution. So the sketch properties are it's single pass. It's one touch through the data. Uh, they're small, tend to be very small in size and sublinear in growth. And what that means is not only does it start small, but as the stream uh, that uh, feeds the data into the sketch grows larger and larger, the growth um, is usually only logarithmic or sublogarithmic uh, in growth. So it grows very, very slowly. So they stay small as the stream can grow uh, tremendously, uh, very much larger. Uh, these sketches are data insensitive. What that really means is uh, it doesn't really matter the order that the data appears into the sketch, um, or it does, it's not sensitive to the distribution of the data either. Um, these, the, the real power of these sketches comes because they're mergeable and highly parallelizable. Um, and of course, uh, by definition, they're approximate. Um, so you get approximate answers, but with well understood error properties. So you get a good idea of 
uh, even before the fact as well as after the fact of how accurate your uh, sketch is uh, in terms of the uh, results it's giving you. The way sketches are structured is into these four basic components. Um, there's sort of a front end stream processor that uses uh, random algorithmic uh, selection processes to, to choose the data it wants to select from the stream. And then it, it is closely associated with a small data structure, uh, which is a function, the size of that data structure is a function of, of a parameter we call K. Um, and this uh, parameter K also influences the overall accuracy. So you as a user have influence over this property uh, K and uh, the larger you make K, the more accurate the sketch, of course, the, the larger, the more space the sketch, spet, the sketch consumes in, in memory or when stored. The third major component is a query processor. So uh, after feeding your data into the sketch in a stream fashion, uh, or even while it's being fed to the to the sketch, you can query the sketch and say, okay, what is my result so far? What is my, um, it's either a unique count or what is my, uh, you can query for quantiles, you can query for uh, uh, sample distributions and so on. Uh, so that's the query processor and it will produce some result. And that result is, uh, either plus or minus some, some epsilon error, uh, which is usually Gaussian. Um, it gives you so, sort of a size or a confidence interval of, of uh, where the true answer lies. Um, or it can be multiplicative uh, error, which is uh, times one plus or minus epsilon, which means it's relative error. So, um, uh, and I'll show some, some examples of those as we go forward. The fourth major box, um, allows merging and set operations. Uh, some sketches allow full set operations with like intersection and, and set difference, um, but all the sketches allow merge capability. So, and merge capability without loss of, of accuracy. And the result of a merge operation or set operation is yet another sketch that demonstrates basically the, the uh, set operation. If, um, the, the process of designing sketches is quite involved actually. And, and um, uh, the basic art of it is to transform a stochastic process into a random process with known properties. Then you design an efficient data structure to, to match, uh, match these, uh, these properties. And then you mathematically model the error properties using probability and statistics. And so most of our sketches have uh, formal research papers that back them up in the literature, um, which you can certainly um, read. They're all referenced to, to major, major research uh, in the scientific literature. So the first uh, major category of sketching algorithms we have are counting unique things. And we have a number of different algorithms in this category uh, of Counting and they all have different kinds of trade trade-offs, different properties. Uh, their famous uh, hyperlog log sketch, which was developed by Philippe uh, Flagellet in uh, 2007, he was a French mathematician. <clears throat> it's probably the most famous unique counting uh, sketch algorithm, and it's uh, very good for simple distributed unique counting. But it does not offer merge. Excuse me. It does not offer set operations. So you can't do intersections with it, um, but you can do merging, um, and it's very fast and very compact for that purpose. There's another uh, sketch that was developed by a member of our team a few years ago. <clears throat> it's called the compressed probability counting sketch, and uh, it's even better than the hyperlog log. And it's uh, much more accurate for a given stored size than the HLL. Um, it is really an amazing sketch, but it also it does not have intersection capabilities. Um, now the theta sketch <clears throat> is um, it's sort of a, it's really a, a derivative of an er earlier, um, um, earlier sketch, uh, which is a KMV sketch. Um, but it, it uh, provides uh, set operations. So uh, it is larger in size than the hyperlog log or the CPC, 
but it allows a significant advantage where you can do intersections and differences and set operations uh, with it, which is very, very powerful for a lot of data of analysis. Then there's the tuple sketch, um, which is an extension of the theta sketch and it allows associative properties. So uh, each row of the, of the sketch also has a arbitrary a tuple that you can define that goes along with the sketch that you can do uh, uh, also set operations on. And uh, for example, we have used it for things like customer engagement and other kinds of, of uh, marketing uh, analysis, uh, advertising analysis and so on. So the, uh, to give you an idea of how these things behave error-wise, uh, a typical error for a theta sketch looks something like this. This is what we call a pitchfork plot. Um, and along the x-axis is the size of the stream. And this goes all the way up to, say, a million elements. Um, although the sketches can go far higher. They can go up to the uh, terabytes uh, or billion, billions and billions of elements without uh, any uh, substantial increase in error. And you notice that um, for very low counts, less than K, this sketch was set with a four, K of 4,000. For less than 4,000, roughly, it has zero error. And then it uh, gradually goes into estimation mode and gradually the error increases. These curves represent um, the, the, uh, the median and then plus or minus one and two standard deviations. And so this says that two standard deviations are about 95% uh, confidence. Uh, it's about 3%, plus or minus 3% error. But notice that it flattens out. So after here in this sketch, as per above about uh, 65,000 um, unique items, it, it flattens and it stays flat. Uh, all the way up into the trillions. So um, it has a very nice, this very nice error property. This is, re these are really uh, contours on a uh, Gaussian, um, Gaussian error distribution. So you have really um, good understanding of what the error properties of this sketch is. Now, if you make K larger, this diagram gets more and more accurate. In other words, it gets smaller and, and smaller and smaller uh, for larger values of K. Um, the uh, next major category of sketches that we have in the library involves uh, understanding data distributions. Things like the quantile sketch, which was uh, originally developed by um, Graham Cormode and others in around 2012, has uh, additive error properties. It's on the heap or off heap. Uh, our implementation uses doubles as well as generics. And a, uh, a newer uh, quantile sketch with slightly different properties uh, is called the KLL sketch uh, developed by uh, several members of our team um, and published in uh, 2016. It uh, beats the uh, original quantile sketch with respect to accuracy and stored size. And it's been implemented in our library with uh, both Java and C++ and Python. Um, and then finally, our most recent uh, sketch that we developed in this category is called the REQ or Relative Error Quantile Sketch, uh, also developed by members of our team. And uh, it's also implemented in Java, C++, and Python. Um, so to give you some idea of what you can do with a quantile sketch, all of them really allow you to do this, is you can actually see the distribution of your data as, as, a, um, as a density plot. And so this is a um, probability mass function here. Um, but it, it gives you a, a, a contour over the entire distribution of the variable. And these happen to be numeric variables here. And note that the x-axis is logarithmic. So this, uh, this curve you see it, it is very close to a, um, um, to a Poisson uh, kind of distribution. Um, and you notice the big spikes on the left. Uh, that's due to the fact that real data often has a lot of nulls and zeros in it. Uh, so real data that we get on our platforms is not necessarily pretty. But that doesn't bother the sketch at all. It just 
uh, dutifully records the fact that you've got a lot of zeros in your in your data. Uh, so they, like I say, it's uh, really data independent and uh, doesn't bother it. Um, now to give you an idea of the differences between the KLL and uh, the, the conventional quantile sketch versus our newest REQ sketch, on the left is a diagram of how the error is distributed as a function of rank. So if you ask for like the 95th percentile, um, the error in, in rank is about flat over, over all the ranks. So it, in other words, the, the amount of error, and these again are plus and minus one, two, and three standard deviations on, on, the, uh, on the chart here. Um, but it says that all the way down to uh, uh, almost zero uh, rank, which basically is no data, but you can say uh, for you know 0.1 or 10 percentile uh, rank all the way up to the 99, 90 percentile or 99th percentile, they, the error of uh, the sketch is about flat. Now, if you look at the REQ sketch on the right, you can see that it narrows down on the right-hand side, which means if you want to know the quantile, say the 99.999% uh, quantile, uh, you can get its answer is extremely accurate. Um, and you can flip this uh, along the vertical axis uh, so that if you uh, also want the 0 0.00001 percentile qu uh, quantile uh, from your data, uh, you can also get an extremely accurate answer uh, from that as well. Uh, so this this is for those cases where um, you're mostly interested, say, in the 99th or 99.999 percent quantiles, which is often true in a lot of metric uh, metric uh, services. <clears throat> Another category, major category of sketching we have is for uh, finding frequent things uh, or, or heavy hitters. And so, uh, if you're like Apple and you have uh, your tunes. Uh, tune site and you want to say, okay, wh what is the most popular tune that I've seen, say, in the last 24 hours of millions of tunes and with, of course, lots of duplicates, uh, but uh, it will sort out and figure out which are the heavy hitter tunes uh, from that data. And of course, it can be uh, uh, applied to any kind of arbitrary object, uh, object and distribution. And this also is uh, available in Java, C++, and Python. Um, and the other uh, interesting algorithm is highly related to this is allow is the frequent direction sketch, which allows approximate signature value decomposition and fast ridge regression, which can be useful in, in AI and machine learning. So it also is available in, um, in C++ and Java. Um, is, is a very interesting uh, sketch for that. The, uh, to give you a sense of what frequent items error looks like, uh, I have here sort of an artistic rendering. And along the x-axis, suppose um, uh, the x-axis represent the ordered result of the frequency of the items in your stream, um, where every um, every item along the x-axis represents some unique item, and then and the, the the bars represent the range of um, a possible from low to high, the range of accuracy of the estimate of the frequency of that item. Now, before you even feed any data to the sketch, you can get from the sketch say, okay, what is the a priori sketch error? What what, what do you estimate the error to be given the size k of the sketch? And that's what the green bar is. But after all the data has been fed to it, the sketch will come back uh, and say, well, actually, we did better than that. And so the, uh, the red, the heavy um, bar there shows the, the resultant uh, posterior sketch error. And then the sketch, when you query the sketch, you, you get a list. You get a list of, of items. And there's two, two a Boolean. You can say, I want to get the the items with no false positives, or I can get the items with no false negatives. 
uh, which is a, a superset of the no false positives. So what sort of returned at, at, from the no false positives are those highest frequency items. And you see the sort of first there. And the second is sort of in dispute because the, as you can see, the error bar slightly overlaps. So you can't uh, absolutely determine which is second, but you can say one of those two is second. And of course, then the next one in the list would be, uh, would be the fourth. Um, and then if you get, uh, if you request no false positives, you get a, a, a broader set in the list. But the items that are below the uh, error threshold or the posterior, posterior uh, sketch error threshold are never returned by the sketch because it's basically noise at that point. But it gives you uh, high confidence of uh, what the heavy hitters are. Another area we have in the library is for sampling. Um, I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with the reservoir sampling sketch, uh, all of Vitter and in, in, in the uh, mid eighties, but we have also enhanced this algorithm to allow merging with uh, different size K. So uh, you can have say a distributed uh, system where in each of the nodes of the system, you may be sampling with different uh, accuracies parameters K um, which results in different size reservoirs. But uh, with our algorithm, it allows you to actually merge these, uh, these different sketches with different K and still have very reasonable error results. This is also available uh, in C++, in Python, and Java. Uh, and another uh, sketch, which is very interesting, is called the VARopt weighted sampling sketch. And uh, th this is really useful for multi-dimensional multi data uh, where you want to do subset sums. Um, and it also has a, a enhanced merging algorithm. Um, and, and to give you an example of how that works, suppose you have items um, with, uh, that are associated with a weight and some object T, where T has within it some identifier as well as uh, a number of dimensions uh, that you can use for selection. So you feed this item, these items T along with their weight in, in as a stream into the sketch. And when you want to query the sketch, um, you can apply a predicate to the sketch, which is basically se select certain rows based on the dimensions uh, in the item T uh, where they qualify by some qualifying parameters, basically a predicate. And then you'll get a, uh, a sample subset based on the predicate and the subset sum estimate has optimal variance. In other words, you can't do better than this given the approximation um, paradigm in terms of estimating the, um, the subset sum that you get will have optimum error performance. Uh, and as well from the sketch, you get the upper lower bounds of that error and the total sketch, sketch weight. So you can get a sense of what fraction the, the subset that you've pulled out or queried from the sketch represent of your, represents of your entire data. So we're, we've done a lot of work uh, in the last few months in terms of future proofing this, uh, the Java library um, and just released our memory component uh, released with 2.0 uh, um, and it works with JDK 8 through 13. And uh, we hope by next month we'll have uh, memory plus the Java core, uh, which has all the sketches in it that will be compatible with JDK 8 through 13. And then first half of uh, this next year, uh, we're gonna be providing implementation of uh, using JDK 17, which is the next long-term support from, from Oracle in terms of JDK, as well and full integration with the Java Panama project, uh, which is the JEPs 370 and 383. And then for probably the second uh, second half of this next year, we'll be providing uh, not only compatibility with JDK 7, 17 um, afterwards, 
Uh, the next, by the way, the next LTS after JDK 17 is uh, JDK 21. Um, and that's not released yet, but we'll be right there in step with it. But one of the interesting things we're planning on doing is having full JPMS or jigsaw implementation at the sketch level. And uh, this will allow you to, to select and download basically only the sketches you're interested in out of the full library uh, into your environment. And this is certainly of advantage to uh, IoT systems where, where the uh, storage space is very limited uh, and they'd be very interested in that. And um, a, a stretch goal uh, for the end of this next year will be interoperability with the uh, C++. So the new uh, JEP 389 allow is uh, advancements to Java and allow very tight integration with C++. And, and this will allow us to um, have both our C++ and Java implementations work very, very closely together, uh, which is, uh, I think, very exciting. There's a bright future for sketching technology and solutions. And, and what's shown here in, uh, in this chart here is basically three major areas, items, or words, IDs, events, clicks, and then uh, graphs, which is another uh, area of research and sketching and vectors, uh, text documents, uh, images, features. And what's in red is areas that we already have sketch implementations. But you can see there's a lot of, of areas of research that uh, we don't have implementations yet, but we hope to um, as, as we grow. Um, OK, uh, one of the interesting things, some of the interesting areas we have real, very active research in is uh, differential privacy. There's some exciting applications for sketching uh, in that area as well. OK, um, thank you very much. Um, I want to allow time for uh, questions uh, from, uh, from you guys, from the audience. Uh, is there a sketch for? Um, principal comp PCA analysis. Uh, we have um, we've seriously looked at that, um, and I would say the uh, we, we the probably the most sophisticated sketch we have um, relatively close to that area is the SVD, where you, where you do singular value decomposition. But we don't have a PCA sketch. Um, just yet, but if you're interested, you can certainly uh, check in with us and, and give us feedback as to how you actually want to use PCA. And um, who knows? Uh, we're also open to contributions if you have some ideas in that in that space. Okay, um, thank you, Patrick. Anything? Uh, any other questions? We've got uh, we've got time. So, uh, Patrick, if you're still on uh, reinforcement learning, um, I, I'm not too familiar with reinforcement learning, but I presume that's um, a part of AI. We're very interested in uh, areas of AI where, where um, we can make some contributions. But um, I would say our um, singular, our SVD or frequent direction sketch, uh, which allows ridge regression, uh, is the first attempt in that area. But no, nothing else so far. And you ask, uh, do these work in memory only? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, uh, by in mem could you be a little clearer? The of course they operate in memory, but what did you mean on the heap or off heap? Uh, what exactly mean in memory only? Um, of course they work in memory. <laughs> if you mean off the disk, uh, it'd be very slow. Uh, uh, nothing in Markov chains yet. Um, 
Ah, yes, we have implementations with Postgres. We do. Um, check our check our website. We have a Postgres uh, implementation. Uh, also, Hive. Um, there's also a Haskell uh, implementation out there that we hope to integrate into our library. Um, and of course, Pig, which is uh, getting pretty old these days. But a number of databases have implemented um, implemented our library. Any other questions that I could help with? Please come visit us, uh, correspond with us uh, through our communications, through our uh, dev, uh, DevEd channel. Um, tell us what you're interested in and we'd like to, uh, like to talk to you. If any of you are interested, um, I think we can move to the networking session. Um, and have deeper uh, discussions. Uh, thanks, Dave. Thanks again. Yeah, we have, uh, it turns out we have a number of active uh, users using the data sketches uh, Postgres uh, implementation. If any of you are interested in um, further discussion or um, one-on-ones, you can certainly contact me directly at uh, leroy at apache.org. Uh, 